Today we're going to learn about string line and how to hang a string line. Here are some accessories a mason might have in their tool bag in order to hang a string line. We have what's called mason line. In the store, line might be advertised as mason line. And believe it or not, there is good and bad string line. We'll take a look at this one first. This was advertised as Mason line. It comes with a really cool line holder that's going to help us wrap up the line. But if you look close, this line is twisted. This line is twisted string line. We're going to try to avoid twisted string line as a Mason. It becomes unraveled. It also doesn't have the elasticity when we pull it over a long span of wall, we need the line to stretch. The line needs to stretch. That's going to help us keep a taut or a tight line, a line with very little sag in it. We want to avoid twisted string line. It also tends to get nicked with a trowel or with a sharp brick and become unraveled in the middle of the line. So even though this might have been advertised as mason line, we want to avoid twisted line. Well, if we're avoiding twisted line, what's the other alternative? We have what's called braided string line. This line is braided together like hair braids. It usually costs slightly more than twisted string line. Twisted string line does have a use. It is sometimes used by the site layout guys. They might use the twisted line. As a mason, we want to look for braided string line. This is going to have a good amount of stretch to it. It can also be slightly nicked and not come unraveled. So it has good durability. This was most likely advertised as mason line as well. The materials that make up line are usually nylon or polyester. Here we have a cotton string line. Super weak and not a lot of stretch to it. We would not use this in construction. Maybe in a pinch, maybe in a pinch, but we want to try to avoid using cotton string line. Nylon and polyester are what we're looking for. You might also see different colors of string line here. A popular kind is this what's called salt and pepper line. Salt and pepper. It's black and white. It's also braided. There's also something that you can't see that this line has and it's a light, a very light wax coating on this string line. That's going to help us with the line's longevity and its lifespan. Line gets wet frequently, whether it gets dropped in a puddle, whether it's raining outside, and that can start deteriorating our string line with a light wax coating that's going to help repel water. So this will be called salt and pepper line. It's black and white. Well, over here we have sort of green and black line. This is also going to be called salt and pepper line. Even though it's green and black, they're going to call this green salt and pepper line. We have solid colors and we have our salt and pepper line. This is sort of tough to explain, but believe it or not, there's an advantage to salt and pepper string line. Solid colors, when used for line, when you're laying brick or block to the line, it tends to play tricks on your eyes and you can't focus on it quite right. It's tough to explain, but your eyes sort of go funny when you're looking at it and you can't judge the depth or how far away your unit is from the string line when you lay it. Solid color line can play tricks on your eyes. So they have this salt and pepper line. Salt and pepper, it's like a polyester nylon mix. It's also wax coated. It's a great all around mason string line. 
a few of the other things that we see here. We have, we'll go over these line pins. These are usually freebies from your supply store. When you pick up supplies at a supply store, you can grab a couple of these and they'll give them to you for free. Usually they'll have the name of the company on there. Uh, it's sort of advertising for them. These are called line pins. And we'll learn how to use these. Here we have trigs. That's the technical name, a trig. Slang name, we're gonna call them twigs, just like a tree branch, a twig. We'll learn how to use these. Line blocks also can be freebies from a supply company. Grab a few line blocks when you visit your supply store and buy something. Here we have what are called line stretchers. That's the technical name for these. They're gonna call these dog bones, chicken bones, a few different names for these tools. All of these tools are different, represent different ways to hang a string line. And we'll go over the different ways in just a bit. Here we have string line that's wrapped around a couple different items. This string line is wrapped around a wall tie. This string line is wrapped around a thin chisel. This is a hardened chisel that doubles as a line pin, triples as a line holder. I love tools that have a multi-purpose to them. Line pin, chisel can also hold your string line. This keeps your bag less full. I don't like to carry tons of tools around with me. I like to keep my bag as light as possible. And when there are tools like this that have multi-purpose, I usually invest in those. Now we're gonna learn how to wrap a string line. This is that same chisel. This is how you would find it at the store. They usually have a hole right in the middle of them. You can put your string line through and then tie a knot around. We're gonna slowly just wrap it. I'm gonna say normal. We're gonna get a few wraps on it. Now here's the trick. We're gonna make the figure eight with the string line. We're making the figure eight, but also take a close look at what the line pin is doing. The line pin is also doing something. The line pin isn't staying still. The line pin is slowly rotating as well. I'm holding the line somewhat tight to the line pin. I'm not wrapping it loosely around the line pin. Keeping that figure eight pattern and slowly spinning the line pin. This is the proper way to wrap up a string line. It's very fast. It also, the main reason why we do it, this mimics the way a line is wrapped from the factory around the spool. When you unwrap a line from the factory, from the spool, it doesn't have a bunch of twisty curly Q knots in it. So we're trying to duplicate that as we wrap the string line. You won't be very proficient in this at first. This is gonna take some practice. It makes for a nice tight ball of line around your line pin. Once we get to the end, this is what it should look like. We're gonna put a hitch in the line, what's called a hitch. There's many different types of hit hitches. I wanna show you the one that I'm most comfortable with. I have the string line in my left hand. I'm gonna drape it over my right hand. Nice and simple, draped over my right hand. I separate my thumb and forefinger. The line is just hanging. I'm gonna make a V, sort of a V, by grabbing the end of the line. Now with my thumb and forefinger, I am going to roll that over and I have a loop around my finger 
and I have a loop around my thumb. We made the loop around our hand. I make the loop around my finger, loop around the thumb. I bring those two loops together. I put the line pin through those two loops. And then I pull the excess string line. This creates a hitch in the line. This keeps it from unraveling in our tool bag. We're gonna use this same type of hitch when we hang the string line on the wall. We just don't drop the ball. We don't drop our spool of line onto the ground, onto the scaffold, or leave it loosely up on top of our wall that we're building. We put a hitch in it and let it hang. That's how you wrap up the string line. I'll show you a couple different ways of how not to wrap the string line. Here we have our string line unwrapped. Incorrect way, just spinning it around the line pin. Believe it or not, this isn't that fast. I can feel the line twisting in my hand. And already, you can see the types of curly cues that it's gonna start making in the line. We start getting these things in the line. Our line starts getting twist it up and it becomes real annoying when it comes time to unravel it. It remains twisted up and we get these things in our line and they're tough to pull tight, tough to pull taut. Incorrect winding up our string line like this. This is also the disadvantage of that yellow spool that comes with that line on it. This is the way it's gonna be wrapped up on that spool, unfortunately. I'm gonna unwrap this. I'm gonna show you another incorrect way. I'm gonna give it a few wraps at first. Now I'm gonna do that figure eight pattern. But I want you to notice what the line pin isn't doing now. The line pin isn't spinning in my hand. We're supposed to slowly rotate the line pin as we do this figure eight pattern. It makes for a neat looking line on your line pin, but it is incorrect. We start getting all tangled up And I won't do the whole thing, but this is what the ball will look like. That is incorrect. When you see it all mounted up to one side, that means you're doing the correct figure eight technique, but you're not spinning the line pin in your hand. This is another version of the incorrect way to wrap the string line. Now I've wrapped and unwrapped the string line a bunch of times before correctly. And just those couple times of doing it incorrectly, I have this, what's called bird's nest. This line that I gotta figure out how to get unraveled. Super annoying. Before we hang the line on the wall, I'm gonna show you how to put the line through a single line block. The line is untied, the hitch is out of the line. I'm gonna drape it over the line block through that groove. The tail end of the line is on this side of the line block. The ball end is going through that groove. Now with that tail end, I'm gonna wrap it under and around, back over top of the string line where the string line goes through this circular cutout. I'm making it sound way more difficult than it really is. Just put the line through that way, wrap it under, over top the string line. I'm holding it pretty tight. Back down, wrap it around the line block again. Now we're, instead of going over the string line, we're gonna go 
through the back of the line block, wrap it around again the opposite way, back through the line block that way. That's what it's going to look like from that side of the line block. Here I can pull the line very tight and it's not going to come unwrapped. At normal speed, you're going to get the line block, grab your line, throw it through there, under, over and through, over and through, nice and tight. This is the wall we're going to be hanging our string line on. You can see we have a layout course of block and a four course lead on each side. I'll move the camera real close so you can get a good look of what's going on. Now I'm going to show you how a line is placed on the wall using line blocks. I'll show you a small tip when hanging a line. Usually an apprentice is going to get the line block, put it on the wall, they're going to have the other line block in their hand, which is good. They're going to start unraveling the line, keeping tension on the line. They're going to get down to about here, and the line block's going to fall off down on that end. Now we've got to walk back down this end and pick the line block up. And we've got to hang it on the wall again. And now we're going to walk down this way, keeping tension on the line. We might get a little further this time. We're going to get down. We're going to get our line block ready to hang on the string line. We're going to put it on there. The line block's going to fall down again. When you're hanging a line on the wall, by yourself, put the line block on top of the wall, on top of the leaf. Now it can't fall down. Go down to the far end of the wall. Put your tension on the line. This is where the braided string line really shines. I can pull this and put tension on it and have a nice taut line put my line block on here and I'll get a close-up of what's going on down here. And I can hang my line on the wall. Now I'm going to put a hitch like we did earlier in the string line. The line's going to hang. Now I can adjust this line block without the line falling onto the floor. That's how we do it using line blocks and I'll get a close up picture of what's going on there. When our line block is placed on the wall at the appropriate height, it hangs on the wall because of the line tension. The tension of the line is what's pulling the line block towards the wall and keeping the line block at whatever height we set it at. This little circle that is made into line blocks is actually pretty neat. This circle is for if we're using what's called jack lines in our building. If we're keeping jams of our wall, not necessarily plumb, but we're hitting an exact spot way up high on a building, usually with brick veneer, we need to hit a certain measurement away from the building, something that's going to work with the carpentry up above or the roof up above. We might hang what's called a jack line from one of our lower courses all the way to the top of the building and instead of using our level to check for plumb we might be running the building slightly out of plumb and that's okay that circle is to not interfere with a jack line when we're building a lead so that's why that circle is machined into the line block the line block is just held on by tension we hang our line always I'm not gonna say always there are certain times when we don't most of the time from the left side of the wall and we pull to the right side of the wall we pull the line to the right side of the wall the ball end of the line is going to be at the right side that is for communication purposes usually among bricklayers pulling it to the right in general you're going to try to use one 
mason's setup if it's a very long wall we're not going to get one line block from one mason one line block from another mason and use your string line and perhaps somebody else's twig we try to keep the entire setup from one mason so in general most of the time we are hanging on the left and pulling to the right sometimes you just can't do that but for instructional purposes hang on the left pull to the right now I'm at the right side of the wall this is the direction in which I'm pulling the string line I have the ball end in my right hand leaving some slack hanging from the line here I have the line block put the line block on the string line with some tension on the line I can still pull the string line to the right and make that line super tight what's going to happen if we pull the line too tight well if it's a fresh block or a fresh brick on the other end as fresh as in it was just laid we're going to pull it right off the top of the lead if we don't pull tight enough what's going to happen well a couple things one the line blocks might just fall off the wall there is enough tension to hold them to the wall if there is enough tension to hold them to the wall and the line still isn't pulled tight enough we're going to have a sag in the string line in the middle of the wall if we lay our units our block to that string line it's going to look like the wall is smiling at us they're going to they're going to say that wall is smiling we don't want to have a sag in our string line and our block work going down and then up so we pull the line pretty tight and this is where feel is going to come into play and experience I want to pull that line just tight enough so that it doesn't pull the block off on the other side but also I want to get the least amount of sag in the line as possible so I have the line pulled and the line block about where it's going to go I wrap the string line similar to what I did on the other line block around and around now I'm gonna hang that line block on the wall and I just have the ball end in my hand right now I put a hitch around the pin and we let that pin hang the reason why we do that is for a bunch of different reasons one we can make pretend we're up on scaffold and if we don't put a hitch in there that ball falls all the way to the ground and we got to wrap it up or that ball is going to fall into a puddle puddle of mud on the ground so we're going to put a hitch in our line wrap it around the line pin now we can adjust the line to the appropriate height whatever course we're on that's how we use line blocks in a wall another thing to determine when hanging a line basically what side of the wall is going to be seen after this wall is done maybe both sides of the wall are seen maybe just one side the side that we're working from or perhaps the other side in general you're going to hang the string line on the side of the wall that will be seen units although they're made pretty close pretty accurately to one another you'll get a better finish if you hang the string line on the side of the wall that is seen after installation here we're at the tail end of the lead that's on the right this is the way the string should be looking at the tail end it is about a trowel's width away from the actual block away from the wall the height of it is at the top of this block the top of the string line is level with the top of the block when the line looks like this that means our lead is tailing correctly we're ready to lay units in the middle of this wall now now we'll take a look at the dog bones or a technical name the line stretcher these can be adjusted for different sizes of block usually four six eight 10 and 12 inch block the ones that slide the 
dog bones that slide are adjustable through all those sizes, plus have an added benefit of being used for blocks such as split face block. Sometimes these types of dog bones can't be used for split face block. They just don't open up that extra little bit that you need sometimes for the split face block. When using dog bones on a wall, we still pull from left to right. The reason you would use a dog bone would be uh, perhaps a mason is still working on the lead and we don't want to be in their way. So we're going to use a dog bone to hang on the tail end of their lead. There is uh, an unsafe way and a safe way to hang dog bones on the wall. When putting the string line around a dog bone, we don't want the line attached to the dog bone with a hitch. Right now there's a hitch around that dog bone and we can pull the line around and now we can hang this dog bone on the lead. This is a common way of doing it. However, if this dog bone were to come loose from the wall, the string line is now tied to it. Dog bones, line pins, line blocks can become projectiles when they become dislodged or loose from the wall. The first thing that they might hit might be a mason's wrist, hand. My buddy got hit in the stomach with it. Real nasty bruise. They're very dangerous. Can definitely take out somebody's eye. When wrapping the line around a dog bone, we still need it to be tight. We need to pull the string line very tight. So how do we wrap it around a dog bone without it being tied to the dog bone? Put it around once. We go over top of itself and around. Now that might have been tough to see, but I can pull this string line super tight. It's pulling against itself. The tighter I pull the string line, the tighter it's being held against the dog bone. It's tightening against itself. If I want it to unwrap, it simply becomes unwrapped. In the case that this dog bone becomes dislodged from the wall, ideally, it's going to drop right to the ground. It's not going to stay attached to the string line. We're just coming 100 miles, 100 miles an hour down the wall. We wrap it around just like that, and now I can place this dog bone on the wall. Now I can pull it as tight as I want down to the other end. Now we're at the other end of the wall pulling from left to right. I hang the line on the dog bone similar to the way I did down at the other end. I go right over top, wrap it around once that way, bring the line over top of itself. It's tough to see even on camera. Now I can pull this dog bone as tight as I want. I'm putting tension on that line right now. The dog bone is hanging the string line. I'm going to put a hitch in my line and let it hang, just like before we did with the line blocks. When using dog bones, another thing to look out for is the end of the dog bone. This side is flat. This side has a nub on it. The dog bone works just fine if we put it this way on the wall. However, this little nub will sometimes uh, catch a mason's leg or their arm and they'll dislodge the dog bone. We want to keep, try to keep, the smooth end 
towards the masons, towards the working side, not the nub. And that's how we hang a dog bone on the, on the wall. Different accessory for a different reason. There might be a mason working on one side of the lead, one side of the wall, and not on the other side where we might use a line block on one side of the wall and a dog bone on the other. The advantage to using line blocks on both sides of the wall is once the line is set, it doesn't need to be adjusted anymore. If we're using line dogs, as the line moves up the wall, we need to readjust the length of the string line every time, every course, to get the proper tension on there. With line blocks, once the tension is set, it's that tension all the way up the wall. We go right up the jams. There's positives and negatives to either one. And you should have either one, both of these, in your tool bag. As an apprentice mason, you should also take note when you walk over to a wall, if you see these holes in the wall that were left there by the mason that built a lead, that should be telling you something. We'll get to that in a little bit. Now we're gonna hang a line using line pins. Well, this is a line pin, and this also can be used as a line pin. When we wrap the line around a line pin, very similar to the way we wrapped it around the dog bone. I'm gonna drape the line around, and basically, let it go back over itself. That's all we're doing. Again, we don't want to put a hitch in a line pin. The line pin can become a projectile if it's dislodged from the wall and the line is under high tension. This can definitely take out an eyeball if you're not careful. So we try to put that quick. I want to consider it a hitch, but we wrap it around the line pin in a way that we can tighten the line, but if the line pin was to become dislodged, it would unwrap from the line and not continue flying in the air down, down the wall line attached to the string line. Ideally, it just drops as soon as it becomes dislodged from the wall. So I'll get you a nice close up of the wall and how we install these into the block work. In general, we try to avoid the use of line pins. Sometimes there's no avoiding it and it's the best tool for the job. This mortar is fresh. When we install the line pin into the wall, we put it into a head joint. When we slide it into the head joint, we make sure the top of the pin, the top edge of the pin, is even with the top edge of the block next to it. The line pin is placed up against the block that we're pulling towards, which means I'm not gonna put the line pin on that side of the head joint. It's gonna be on that side of the head joint with the block right next to the line pin. Install that on the wall our line is going to wrap over top. I wrap the line around itself. Now it's pulling tightly against itself. And I can pull this line tight without that line pin falling out. So there isn't a knot around that line pin. That's the way it's gonna be installed on the left side. Now again, this wouldn't be the time to be using a line pin. Just showing you how to install it. We would use anything else. We would use the dog bone on the tail end of the lead or preferably line blocks on the jams. Now we're back at the right side, the right lead. This is where this tool comes into play. Having this chisel doubling as a line pin and a line holder. I can simply keep the line wrapped around this and just jam it right into the block work. 
our line is at the appropriate height. I make sure that the line pin is now up against this block because we're pulling the line that way. There's tension on the line from that side. If we have our line wrapped around something else, a wall tie, a wooden dowel, we're gonna need to use a metal line pin. Wrap it around. Bring the line over top of itself. Now it has tension on the line. We put our hitch in the ball end and let it hang. That's how we use the line pins. To adjust it, simply take the line off, pull the pin out, take the line off. Now we can adjust it, putting the pin up top. Again, these need to be adjusted course to course, similar to the dog bones. The line blocks don't need to be adjusted course to course. Now remember, we noticed in this wall that the mason that built this lead left holes in the wall, left line pin holes. We had to leave them there for some reason what do you think the reason could be? Left the holes all the way down, even on the first course. Well, the first course is already done, but it's on the second course, third course, fourth course, right up this jam. And they're not even on the correct side of the head joint if we're pulling the line that way. The line pin holes that the mason left in this lead are for the future. You can take note around the jam of this lead. They put sash block all the way through there. That should tell us we might be getting expansion material placed in here and a wall that's going to continue that way that we might not be able to put here for whatever reason. This might be the way machines get into a building. We need to leave an opening for forklifts and whatnot to get through the building and we're going to button this wall up at a later date. There might be a door that gets placed in this wall further down this way. And the door might not, the door jam might not be delivered yet. Whatever reason, when you see these in the wall, placed in the wall before you get there, that should alert you that maybe these need to stay there. Even after this section of the wall is done, we're not going to fill these in because we're going to need these at a later date. Now we're going to get to this tool. The slang term of it is called a twig. Technical term is called a trig. Flat pieces of metal. They have this little bump in them. That's for the string line. The string line goes into that. These are generally used to keep height on a string line. These can be used at the leads. Sometimes we will have a line block really far down on the lead and we will use a twig to twig up the line to the tail end of the lead. It might sound a little confusing. In general, these would be used in the middle of the wall by the twig man. We're gonna do a little make pretend and make pretend that this wall that we're building is 50 feet long. When we pull the line from lead to lead, from jam to jam, whatever, we're going to have the line very tight. It doesn't matter how tight we pull the line, there is going to be a slight sag in the line just because of the weight of the line itself. A good visual example of this is high tension power lines. Those power lines that you see that are swooping down and back up uh, to those big girder machine looking things. Anywho, those lines, those electric lines are under incredible amount of tension. Even though they have a big sag in them, those electric lines cannot be pulled any tighter. It's just the weight of the lines itself that makes them sag like that. Our string line is no different. Just the weight of the string line will make it sag. The twig man, usually located in the middle of the wall, 
is responsible for placing a twig on a block or on a brick at the appropriate height in the middle of the wall to take the sag out of the line. As they're doing this, they should be the first ones to place a unit on every course. The unit is laid to the string line, but it's not to the correct height. We avoid using our levels to keep this unit plumb. We lay it to the string line. We still want the wall line to be flat. However, we don't want our wall smiling at us with our units laid to the sag in the line. The twig man is going to place a unit. He's going to check the height either from the course below or from what's called a benchmark down below, keeping this unit at the appropriate height. For in and out, it's laid just fine, but it's not, uh, uh, there, we're not using the line as the guide for height. So it's laid at the appropriate height. We put the twig or the trig on the line and we trig it up to the appropriate height. We usually have some type of weight, in this case a half of a brick, to put on top of the twig. That's going to hold it steady and keep it from pulling out of the wall. Now the masons on either side of the twig can begin the laying process. Brick layer etiquette. Don't even spread mortar on the wall while the twig man is setting the twig. This is a very important part of the wall. If you're moving the string line while the twig man is trying to set his block and the line is moving or going up and down, it makes it super annoying for this guy and you get him very mad. I've had guys chase me before down the scaffold. Anywho, try to avoid the string line while the twig man is setting the unit. That about wraps it up. As a mason, you should be proficient in using line blocks, line pins, twigs, line dogs or line stretchers. I'm on the East Coast in the United States. On the West Coast, they have another tool that are called JAGS, which is a clamp, a line clamp that clamps onto the web of block. They're pretty popular out West, like in California. In other countries, they're gonna have different styles of line pins. In general, a generic type of line pin is good to keep in your bag. Dog bones are excellent when you're doing block work. A lot of block work. Line blocks, always. The wooden line blocks, you want to always have a set of them. They're great for brick work or block work.